This is the most important road in Afghanistan. It runs from the capital, Kabul, to the second biggest city, Kandahar. It was the cornerstone of the U.S. strategy to rebuild Afghanistan after the invasion in 2001. It cost over $200 million to build, and hundreds of lives were lost defending it. Despite all of that, the Kabul to Kandahar Highway today is broken. A 2016 auto report found that the road was beyond repair and needed to be rebuilt. And if it becomes impassable, the central government will collapse. To understand how a road this significant and this costly can be falling apart, you have to ask, where did the U.S. go wrong in Afghanistan? Just weeks after 9-11, the U.S. invaded Afghanistan, where Al-Qaeda had planned the attacks. They were sheltered by the Taliban, who controlled the Afghan government at the time. Both groups were driven out of Kabul in a matter of months, so the U.S. strategy soon shifted from combat to stabilizing and rebuilding the country. But Afghanistan's a difficult place to control and rebuild. It's mountainous and mostly rural. The population is fractured among several ethnic groups and local communities often operated autonomously. To make matters worse, there were only 50 kilometers of paved road in 2002, which meant most of these communities were isolated. The U.S. decided to change that by rebuilding the Ring Road that was partially built by the Soviet Union in the 60s, but had been destroyed by decades of war. Starting with the Kabul to Kandahar section, the U.S. and several other countries pledged $1.5 billion to the Ring Road. It would run in a 3,200-kilometer loop, connecting Afghanistan's four biggest cities, essentially tying these communities together. And it was showing promise. Trade circulated through more places, and medical services reached more people. It gave the new government in Kabul more legitimacy around the country. The Ring Road also allowed the U.S. and NATO military to send troops and supplies around the country faster, so they could keep the Taliban in check. Where the roads end in Afghanistan, the Taliban begin. In other words, roads promote enterprise. Enterprise provides hope. Hope is what defeats this ideology of darkness. But the U.S. didn't finish the job. In 2003, the U.S. invaded Iraq, and Afghanistan became second priority. Funding, reconstruction resources, and experienced leadership, including generals and diplomats, were all diverted to the war in Iraq. The Ring Road was far from complete, yet reconstruction funding was cut by $1.2 billion a few years later. The U.S. preoccupation with Iraq gave the Taliban an opening to return, and they seized it. When you look at the Taliban activity in the region from 2004 through 2009, you can see it escalate. Draw the Ring Road, and you can see where those activities are concentrated. They set up ambushes, laid roadside bombs, took hostages, killed U.S. soldiers, and road construction crews. By 2008, the Taliban had taken back significant territory, especially in the south and east along the Kabul to Kandahar Highway. Afghanistan was in a full-blown insurgency. Afghanistan is not lost, but for several years it has moved backwards. There's no imminent threat of the government being overthrown, but the Taliban has gained momentum. In short, the status quo is not sustainable. In 2009, President Barack Obama decided to recommit to the war in Afghanistan. He sent thousands of troops in what was called the surge. The U.S. and NATO made some progress in the south, but it quickly became clear that the Taliban would not be easily defeated. The more troops deployed to Afghanistan, the more the Taliban launched attacks. With the military struggling to clear territory, it became nearly impossible to rebuild roads as the Taliban continued to attack road crews. The degraded security environment has made this the most dangerous project our company has attempted. And we have suffered 21 killed, 51 wounded, and four missing. This forced construction companies to hire security, which caused budgets to skyrocket. Like this road, from cost to Paktia, which cost almost $5 million per mile, mostly because of security. But 18 months later, the time was up. President Obama announced that he'd start bringing troops back. After this initial reduction, our troops will continue coming home at a steady pace as Afghan security forces move into the lead. Our mission will change from combat to support. As the U.S. troops withdrew, they left behind oversight of infrastructure projects, including roads. In 2012, USAID cut funding for road construction. And even after the U.S. and partnering countries spent $3 billion on it, the Ring Road was never completed. Road building and maintenance became the responsibility of the Afghan government, which was crippled by corruption. 
experts estimate that billions of dollars have been lost to corruption in Afghanistan. In 2015, with only about 11,000 U.S. troops in country, mostly in the major cities, the Taliban swept back through Afghanistan. In 2017, they controlled almost half the country. That's more territory than they've had since 2001. And that includes large sections of the Ring Road. And that's one of the reasons why the road is in dire shape. According to a 2016 inspection, 20% of the roads were destroyed and 80% continued to deteriorate. The U.S. has no plans to give rebuilding Afghanistan a third chance. In 2017, President Trump committed more troops, but made it very clear. We are not nation building again. We are killing terrorists. As the Ring Road continues to deteriorate, it's no longer a symbol of the U.S. efforts to rebuild Afghanistan. Instead, it serves as a reminder of the job that was never finished. <laughs>